SANS registration page. And with that, I'd like to turn the webcast over to Mattia. Hi, Carol. Good evening or good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the SANS webcast. I'm very happy to be here with you this evening, I would say, uh, because here in Italy it's uh, past nine uh, in the evening. So it's, <coughs> it's evening. And um, welcome to this uh, webcast. This will be about the new poster I created uh, a couple of months ago that was published on the SANS website uh, early uh, at the beginning of March 2021. Um, as Carol said, I'm a SANS instructor. Uh, I teach the Smartphone Forensic Analysis course and the Windows Forensic Analysis course. I live and work in Italy and I have a master's degree in IT and I'm a digital forensic analyst uh, since almost 15 years. And I'm also a researcher at the National uh, Italian Council of Research. Um, so first to introduce the topic, uh, what are third-party apps and how and why do we need to care about third-party apps during a forensic investigation of a smartphone? Uh, this is taken from Statista.com. As of the fourth quart quarter of 2020, there are 3.14 million apps on the Android store and 2.09 million apps on the iOS Apple Store. So it's an incredible amount of apps. And this is why we use smartphone. This is what makes a smartphone uh, something more than a normal cell phone. We can interact with people by using any kind of app. We can do our business. We can do we can manage our uh, bank accounts. We can do everything with third-party apps. And so during an investigation of a, of a mobile device, uh, analyzing those apps is one of the key points. But it's also one of the most complicated thing. The reason is because it's difficult for, uh, one of the main reasons is that it's difficult for a uh, software developer to uh, maintain and develop uh, good techniques and query and uh, and features to parse this enormous amount of apps. Um, it's impossible to, to build 2.09 uh, million of parsers. So the, 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 the goal uh, is to understand how, in general, third-party apps store their data on an iOS device so that you can start from there and eventually uh, build your own uh, query or build your own parser, either for a commercial tool or for an open source tool. So the goal of this presentation is to give you a general introduction on how to identify third-party apps on an iOS device and also for the most common ones, we created a poster. So this poster is basically where you need to, where you can start your investigation for some specific apps. And we, I try to choose uh, some of the most commonly used worldwide. Uh, and how, which are the most downloaded apps today? So in 2020, these are the 10 most downloaded apps uh, worldwide. And as you can see, uh, also because of the COVID era, for sure, we have some app like Zoom that is at the fifth place. We have application like TikTok that were like exploding like last year worldwide. Uh, we have uh, uh, Telegram that is increasing a lot. We have Netflix, that is, of course, another symptom of people staying more, <laughs> using more uh, their technology to, 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 uh, to interact with movies. And the Google Meet, so this is quite interesting. This is what 2020 told us about uh, the most used apps. 
And if we take a look at another uh, kind of statistic coming from sensor tower, uh, we have almost the same uh, the same result. This is in February 2021, so to really the last month, we have some emerging apps like Clubhouse, for example. We still have TikTok at the first place. Uh, we have Zoom at the third place, and then we have traditional apps, of course, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Snapchat, um, Facebook Messenger, uh, stuff like that. And as you can see also on Google Play, we have uh, something similar, uh, not the same kind of app, not all, always the same kind of app, but most of them are available both on the Google uh, Play Store and on the Apple App Store. So this is why I decided, we decided at Sansa with the with the 4585 uh, faculty and the DFIR faculty, we decided to create an iOS, iOS third party apps for N6 reference guide. Uh, these posters guides you on uh, how and where you can find the most interesting artifacts for third part for the most commonly used third third party apps worldwide. In iOS, third party apps can be installed from the Apple App Store unless you have a jailbroken device or unless you want to install an app an app from um, with, with a certificate developer. In general, iOS third party apps can be installed from the Apple App Store. And in the Apple App Store, applications are organized based on categories. So we have different categories uh, and they are uh, already defined by Apple. So we have categories like social networking, business productivity, navigation, uh, news, reference, shopping, food and drink, health and fitness, and so on and so forth. A complete list, uh, this is a slide coming from mobileaction.co, uh, and a complete list is available on the uh, Apple website, developer.apple.com, uh, where basically Apple tries to categorize app, apps and uh, gives a sort of general definition of the category and with some example. So for example, social networking, apps that connect people by means of text, voice, photo or video, apps that contribute to community de development. And so, for example, interpersonal connection, text messaging, voice messaging, video communication, photo and video sharing, dating, blogs, special interest communities, companion apps, and so on and so forth. So every specific category, category has its own uh, definition. So the developer, when uh, create, when 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 the, he creates an app, he decides to to send the app to the to, for Apple. Uh, review and he chose a propose a category and on the um, on the Apple website or on your on your iPhone when you when you try to download an app from the Apple App Store you can see the name of the app and the category so the category identifies in general the type of application. You can see uh, some other interesting information. This is something that can be of interest also for forensic for a forensic investigation, especially the privacy policy link. Uh, this typically sends you to a page of the specific developer uh, containing information about privacy, and so maybe you can find some idea on how. Uh, on which kind of data is um, uh, collected or managed by the app. And also you have information about the seller that could be also of interest and the languages where uh, the app is available. So in which app store uh, the app is available. And also the price is interesting if it's a free app or a paid app. Uh, recently, um, Apple uh, uh, started introducing a new uh, and some additional information on an application um, uh, page uh, about the privacy of the application. In this case, 
The developer indicated that the app's privacy practices may include handling of data as described below. So basically here you have which kind of data are can be linked to you uh, by the by the developer. So in this case you have contacts, identifiers, location, purchases, financial info, contact info. So based every single app has its own um, uh, as its own uh, detailed uh, app privacy uh, information. So you can go on the Apple uh, App Store and find detailed information for every and each app. What does it happen once you install an app on a phone? So first, uh, an app bundle, so the application in itself, is installed. So this is like the executable in the Windows in a Windows environment. This is the bundle. This is where uh, the code of the app, including all the resources, images, and what everything. Uh, the app bundle is installed in a subfolder in this path: private var containers bundle. Okay, so here is where you find the app bundle. And app data is stored in a subfolder in private var mobile containers data application. So this is the application sandbox. This is where uh, application data resides. This is where your data is stored. But not only here, but most of the applications store their data here. And I want to show you where this okay so you see here private var containers bundle this image this file system you see here is the josh ikman ios 14.3 public test image and thanks josh for sharing it this is really useful for testing and it's also useful for uh, this kind of demos you can download it. I have a reference in references in one of the upcoming slides. So private var containers bundle. So I'm in private var. I want to say one important thing. When you do a full file system of an iOS device, uh, the most important data are in private var. So everything will be here. So you can start your investigation from here, and and you have 99 percent of the information you need so you see private var containers when i go in private var containers i have a folder called bundle and then i have a folder called application and you see here that i have some strange uh, name some guid based name and i have various i have 63 items i can click on one of the folder and i see here I have messenger.app and a file called .com.apple.mobile container manager metadata plist. The, mes the messenger app is probably the Facebook Messenger application. And <clears throat> when I try opening this plist file here, you see some information about the app the metadata identifier so the bundle name come facebook messenger and some other information but the most important information is this one okay so in the var containers bundle application you have one subfolder for each uh, third party app installed third party app this is snapchat and when i open the file you see the file name is the same so the file name in every and each subfolder is dot com dot apple dot mobile underscore container underscore manager dot metadata p list and here you have the bundle name com to yapa group dot picabo this is the bundle name of the snapchat app okay this is quite important to know but this is just the application so this is not the uh, user uh, data. So how the data, how the user interacted with Snapchat 
creating a chat or or snap or sending facebook messenger messages and so on and so forth this is stored in another folder in private var mobile containers data application let's go here for one second so we are here private var mobile containers data application and here you again again you can see uh, a list of subfolders with again let's say strange names and when i open one of these subfolder you see here that they have again a file called dot com dot apple dot mobile underscore container underscore manager dot metadata dot plist when i open it here you have again a string name and this string name is the mm, package uh, id metadata identifier so every app has its own uh, uh, sandbox for storing application data in private var mobile containers data application and then a guid this is true not only for third-party apps but also for some pre-installed apps or services so not every every single folder will contain data or maybe they contains data only if you activate a specific if you use a specific feature of uh, of ios let's say for example uh, a carplay or or the uh, home uh, home kit or whatever so depending on the on the on how you interact on the user how the user interact with the phone you can have some folders uh, not containing any useful data but the point here is that you have one folder containing the bundle and one folder containing the data. The difficult part here for us, from, from a user, from an analyst perspective, is that you need to have a way to quickly or to, uh, to create an automation also of identifying the specific uh, private var mobile containers data application folder for every single app without the need of going through every single folder and opening the com apple con mobile container manager dot plist file that is a perfect way but it's uh, maybe a time consuming and also it creates an issue with another folder that is the shared folder and i will introduce you in a couple of slides but this is the main concept to the first important concept uh, from this presentation you have a folder folder but a folder for the bundle and a folder uh, for the application sandbox application data let's move on oops sorry oops okay how can you identify quickly identify for every single app the bundle folder and the data folder there is a database that you can use for that and i strongly suggest to read this post by alexis brignoni uh, it's from 2008 but it's still uh, valid i mean it's still the good way to analyze the application state dot uh, db the application state.db file is in private var mobile library front board. Let me go there with the just one second here. Okay. So we go to private var mobile first. So third party apps have, or application sandbox is in the containers folder. But the library folder is also one of the most important ones, because here in the library folder, you have uh, fo subfolders for native, most of the native application is here. You see here call history, DB, you have mail, you have SMS, and among the others, you have the front board subfolder containing a database called application state.db. I have already opened the database and it's here. And this is the application state dot db opened with um uh db browser for 
SQLite. I'm gonna, I'll be back to this database in one second. I go to the next slide because I want to quickly show you how to analyze the application state.db based on the uh, instruction uh, provided in this uh, great blog post. Uh, as I said, for the, this example, I used this image, the Josh Ickman iOS 13 test image. You can download it. It's available since February 20, uh, 20 February 2021, uh, and it's updated to iOS 14.3. So it's really uh, an interesting image for the most recent, one of the most recent version of the, of iOS. And it also contains an image of a macOS Big Sur uh, synced with the iPhone. That's quite interesting to analyze the interaction uh, between uh, devices. <clears throat> so how is the application state.db organized? You have four tables. The application identifier tab contains a list of application identifier. And let's go here. And let's go to the application identifier. And you see here we have a total, a total of 153 rows with the application identifier name. And here you can, for example, filter and you can filter for WhatsApp. This is the application identifier and it is net.whatsapp.whatsapp. Okay, so you have an ID here. That is one, two, four. With this ID, you can go. So first, let me explain. There is a, a, a second table called key tab. Uh, this is a sort of um, a list of the information that can be included in the application state for every and each. Uh, application identifier. So it's a sort of index. And how is this index used? You go in the KVS, you use the application identifier and you filter, for example, for 124. And you see that you have four rows in the KVS table matching the application identifier 124. Uh, here you have the key and you see one, two, four, seven. And if we go to the key tab, one means compatibility info, two means XB application snapshot manifest, and then you have four and seven, and four means SB scenes, and seven means SB application shortcut items. What is of interest for us is the compatibility info. So compatibility info is the uh, key ID that we need to investigate, okay? So in the application identifier tab, you can filter for the application of interest. You go in the, you switch to the KVS, you filter for the application identifier, you search for the key one, and you take the value. The value, is a binary plist, okay? So a binary plist is a, one of the typical uh, structure used in, uh, one of the typical file type used in iOS <clears throat> and uh, by, by Apple. And uh, you can export it from uh, from the DB and open it with, with any kind of plist viewer on Windows or Mac or whatever, but also straight from here, directly from here, you see private var containers bundle application F3E5C2, blah, 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 WhatsApp dot app. Okay, so this is the bundle path. So this is where WhatsApp is installed. Uh, the WhatsApp application is installed on the, on the specific phone because this is the most important thing. This value change based on the specific installation. So that's why we need to I analyze the application state DB because this depends on the specific device, on the specific instance of the application. And here you have, uh, you see private var mobile containers data application 
zero e e c for b f b so basically here you have both the path to the bundle and to the application sandbox so of course this can be automated and because doing it manually it's also time consuming but i wanted you to understand how to do it manually or run a query this is a slide explaining what i did with the demo and this is the result okay so the two folders for the bundle and for the containers and if we go here in private var containers bundle application f3 and you see here we have whatsapp app and when i open these the com apple mobile container manager blah 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 i have net whatsapp dot whatsapp that is the application identifier okay so the name is whatsapp like snapchat you see the name is snapchat but the bundle the uh yeah application identifier is a name in a in a url format reversed so net dot whatsapp dot whatsapp but this is uh the app the app and then in the private var mobile so private var sorry mobile containers data application and then it's zero e e zero e okay and here again you have net dot whatsapp dot whatsapp <clears throat> and then you have the internal content of the application and so how is an application organized in its sandbox the internal structure of the folders <clears throat> every single app can have its own uh, fold sorry yeah can have its own folders but there are some folders that are uh, typically present for every and each app so the documents folder typically contains uh, can contains sqlite databases plist file textual file, realm databases, XML files, maybe encoded or encrypted, depending on the specific app. But basically it contains application data. So depending on the specific app, in this case, you have some files uh, related to WhatsApp. So like, for example, status messages.plist, plist, blocked contacts.dat. You can open them and have a look at them and uh, you see that there's no database here so as we are analyzing whatsapp we expect to find chat somewhere uh, so here in the documents typically you have application data but in this case we do not have any uh, database then you have the library folder the library folder is typically present in every third party app in the library pref library folder, you have some subfolders that are uh, often uh, available, often often present, if not always. The preferences, so library preferences, you typically have a plist file, uh, and typically, not always, the name of this plist file is the application identifier, and this sometimes can contain usernames or also recent actions done by the user depending on the specific app it's typically uh, it's always a plist file another folder is the library cookies in the library cookies for every single app you have a file in the binary cookies format so every single app uses the binary cookies format that is an apple format there is a great script by mary de grazia to parse cookies dot binary cookies files because the structure is still this is the same since since a long time um, you also typically have the splashboard subfolder with snapshot and in the snapshot subfolder you typically have some ktx file 
uh, KTX file are Chrome textures, and these are uh, screenshots taken by the application when you switch from uh, one app to another app. Uh, not all the app uh, contains data here, but some apps still, uh, the screenshot can be really self-explaining. And that's one of the main reasons why you should be really careful when you investigate a phone, because this is really a volatile uh, data. It's uh, as soon as you switch from one app to another one, uh, this is uh, refreshed and the previous one is overwritten or deleted that it, as you know, in iOS, it's all typically the same thing. So be careful, this is one important point. And also, um, app can contain, a single app can decide to add subfolders. So for example, WhatsApp has a subfolder called logs. And in the logs, you see you have some <coughs> specific logs from WhatsApp, WhatsApp launch log, and these, these are quite big. And I, can tell you the truth, they can contain a lot of interesting information. Maybe they do not contain data, so maybe they do not contain messages, but you have, uh, they can really, they can be really useful when you build a timeline. Of course, this kind of data is typically not parsed by most of the tool because it's, it's complicated and maybe they change really frequently. And so, so that, that's another kind of problem. So in the library, you have cookies, you have preferences, you have flashboard, and you have caches. In the cache, here you have caches of the specific app. So again, every single app, depending on, on the kind of libraries they use, uh, they can have different type of, of, uh, of uh, subfolder. But here, for example, you see a subfolder called chat media in the cache. And maybe you can have content that are maybe deleted in a chat, but they are still available in the cache. Mm. And this is a kind of a folder uh, that is not uh, typically available if you have an iTunes backup. So you need a you need a full file system to to get this kind of <clears throat> this kind of data. So documents library, and then you can have other fold other subfolder in the store kit. This is always present, you have a file called receipt, and the uh, receipt file, um, it, it, it's quite complicated, but it, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a receipt, but it contains a timestamp of when the app was uh, installed uh, and downloaded by the user from the Apple App Store. And so you see that there's no other subfolder i'm browsing through all of them but we haven't seen any database for whatsapp so the question is where where are chats stored in whatsapp because we can see the chat on a phone the phone so they should be stored somewhere and so the, the answer is they are not stored in the app sandbox because every single app uh, can add, can use uh, additional subfolders in another uh, folder that is here in private var mobile containers shared app group. And again, here we have some subfolder with a strange name, with a GUID. And again, here you have a file dot com dot apple dot mobile underscore container underscore manager dot metadata dot p list. And if we open it, we have a again an application identifier. In this case, this is group dot com dot facebook dot messenger. The problem, so here is here he is that an app can also have group folder shared folders and they can decide to use this folder to store uh, specific data so we need to find a way to pair match the bundle installed in the containers the application sandbox in private var mobile containers uh, and the sorry private var mobile containers data and the shared folder contained in private var mobile container shared. So basically we need to find a, a way to put them 
or to, to put everything together. How can we do that? And to close this is what this is a good query proposed in Alexis blog post on how to parse the application state.db. So how to track down the uh, iOS application shared folder. There are two good, uh, great posts. One is by Scott Vance, uh, and the other one is by Yogesh Katri. And uh, mm, the, the second one it mentions also the first. So uh, I investigate uh, th this one. Um, they are both referenced in the slides um, and in, on the poster, of course. And as you can read, as you can see, uh, this is taken from the post. Tracking down an iOS application data folder, sandbox path, is fairly easy. The simply needs to take a look at the application state that is located here. So this is well known, what I did uh, now, what I did show you now. And locating the sandbox folder for its app groups and extension is not so straightforward. There is a good method suggested by Scott Vance that means going analyzing the com apple mobile underscore container underscore manager dot metadata dot p list uh, for uh, under every and each UUID folder in these three uh, subfolders. And uh, this is how, and I suggest you to read the blog post. And this is how and why an application can use extensions and can use shared containers. But from our perspective, we are interested in understanding how data is organized. So we are interested in understanding where to look at if you want to get the data from a specific app. And the answer to this question is again a database that is called containers.sqlite. This database <clears throat> is in private var root library the mobile container manager and here you see containers.sqlite free. I have already opened it. Yes, here it is. So this database has four tables, child bundles, code signing data, code signing info, and then of course SQLite sequence. Uh, the first table, you start with the child bundles. And again, we filter for the bundle name. And you see here net.whatsapp. And here you have the uh, name of the various extensions and services and share uh, used by WhatsApp. And you see here you have a parent ID, 629. Okay. So you take the 629, you go in the code signing data, and you filter for. Uh, six to nine. Again, here you have a binary large object. And here you have all the names of the various um, group subfolders related to the WhatsApp app. So given a bundle, here you have all the name of the various group subfolders related to that specific bundle. Oops, sorry, related to that specific bundle. So in this case, you have WhatsApp. <coughs> you see group.net, the WhatsApp, dot WhatsApp, dot WhatsApp, dot shared. And also these four others. So all these com.apple.security application groups, all of these are related to the net WhatsApp WhatsApp application. Okay, so this is a quite important uh, point. Sorry. I'm running out of voice. It's late. Um, great. So these are the groups. Now, we know that to find them, we need to analyze the containers.sqlite3 database. Fortunately, 
and of course sorry if you open the com apple mobile container manager metadata p list <coughs> you can find in the metadata identifier the specific value that is the value that you have in the containers free dot sqlite uh, you can use <coughs> ilip to parse the applications uh, metadata files and you, you know ilip is a great tool by alexis brignoni to parse ios logs events and plist it's ba it is based on uh, uh, plugins and this is a great thing because as i was saying at the beginning uh, finding uh, parsers for more than two millions of apps it's impossible so maybe we have people finding a specific case in which they have to investigate a specific app and maybe they want to share their experience by writing uh, by writing a module for the for the for this app or others also it's it's great that it was recently integrated in autopsy um, this is an important point i think in the community having having great tools having great open source or free tools it's great for validation and testing and this is the result of parsing the application state and here you see net.whatsapp and we have the bundle path and the sandbox path you can also use ios apt by yogesh katri uh, because he, 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 yogesh recently added the parsing the resolving of the app group folders so basically uh, ios apt if you run it against the ios folder so i un untard the image and then i run ios apt on the on the sorry on the folder and i run all the all the parsers it creates uh, a, an sqlite file as an output let me let me open it okay it creates an, uh, a database at the end and in the database you have various uh, tables one is the apps table where you can filter for whatsapp and for the specific app you have the bundle identifier the bundle path again the data path so the application sandbox the version all the app groups so all the subfold all the groups folders uh, related to the app the extensions the icon path uh, and various information and this is in the apps if you go in the app group info ta uh, table this one yes uh in the app group info and again we filter for whatsapp you see here that you have various app group subfolders with the U uid and the path to the uh, specific uh, to the specific folder and you see here group.net.whatsapp.whatsapp.shared let's take a look at this folder so let me move again here this one so we need to go in private var mobile containers shared app group and then you need to search for 694 mm. Here it is 694 you see here that we have much more databases uh, whatsapp is a kind of example of an app extensively using the shared folder 
not all the apps are like WhatsApp. Most of them, they store the data in their sandbox. Some of them, because they have various services and various extensions, so they need to store the data in a place that, that is readable and writable also by extensions. Um, you see here that we have various SQLite database. The most important one in WhatsApp is the chat store, chat storage where you have the messages table where you have all the messages with all the details and there are various parser for that and also various of course this is one of the most uh, supported app by tools but uh, trust me and this is the reason why i started creating this poster this folder contains much more information than what is parsed by tools and in fact, I decided to add also references to the to some specific papers or blog posts for for some apps because they are much more detailed than, of course, what tools can support. Let me so no, let me let me close this section. So basically, the iOS APT tool can help you understanding the bundle path the data path but also all the shared up group subfolders and so this is how the poster is organized so let me first and finally <laughs> introduce the poster i still have a couple of minutes you see here the ios third party apps reference guide so for every single app let's go to whatsapp because this is the app we are investigating in this example for every single app you have the apple store url this points you to the app store page where you can find all the details i did show you at the beginning of the presentation and then you have the list of relevant files and folders in the application sandbox and eventually in the shared app group uh, subfolder for every single file or path, you have the internal app path. So typically documents, library, library preferences, library logs, snapshots, and blah, blah, blah. Eventually the file name, if it is a single file name, and the file type. It's plist, txt, ktx, SQLite, JPEG, and so on and so forth. Um, be careful of one important point some files can be available in one version of whatsapp and not in another depending on 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 the specific version installed on the on the phone this was built trying to be to to, to include uh, some of the most interesting files we saw in various versions of the app so maybe uh, you, you will not find a specific file and maybe you can find additional ones. So this is a starting point. It's a reference guide. It's a starting point. Of course, the most important files are listed, the chat storage, the contacts file. This is quite interesting in the location. This contains shared location by the user and this is not really well parsed by tools. Uh, the chat search. It's an old file in WhatsApp. Uh, tool started parsing it recently. And also you can see at the end in the references se section, you have links to papers or articles on the specific uh, uh, on the specific application. And this is quite interesting because you have detailed information on the app itself. And this is the same structure for every app. We have 60, more than 60 apps uh, on the poster. Uh, so, as a wrap up, WhatsApp data folder, these are some relevant files, and this is what I did show you during the presentation. These are some of the interesting files in the documents folder, the library folder with caches, cookies, uh, uh, WebKit, splashboard preferences, uh, the cache that is not typically available in a backup but only in a full file system and the whatsapp shared folder with again um, sqlite this is where most of the data is stored on on a whatsapp uh, on, a, on a whatsapp in a whatsapp application and you see here various 
SQLite databases and uh, JPG images, logs, uh, media folder containing all the data and so on and so forth. And this is some of the database, the chat search, v5, the beats.sqlite for WhatsApp business, um, the stickers, some of them are predefined, but the user can have its own uh, stickers and messages media, where you have all the pictures that were exchanged by the user with, uh, with its contacts. And this is how the reference is built. Here in the link, uh, oh, sorry, here you can find the link, but you can easily find on the SANS website, get registered and download it. We will keep it updated. This is the version 1.1. Uh, so we we think to update it almost once per year. And so this is our goal. Of course, we are working also on an Android version for this. This is a, I did a spoiler on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. I'm on it. Uh, of course, it takes time, as you can imagine. You need to test, you need to find good references. So it will be out uh, as soon as possible. And I wanna, to conclude, I wanna suggest you to download also our 4585 poster. This is the general one, I can call it, but it's, it's really <laughs> important because this is about uh, all the uh, application, sorry, all the operating system, all the native features of your phone and all the nat native application, including information about the device, uh, password and account information. And in the poster, you also have uh, a column detailing you if the file is available in a BFU acquisition, in a backup or in a sysdiagnose um, log. Also, you have application usage, an application usage section for iOS where you have various and famous databases like the Knowledge C, the Interaction C, uh, the, the iTunes Store D, so various, various interesting databases, the TCC.DB, and also native applications are here. I did show you before quickly the call history folder, the mail folder, the SMS. Uh, so iOS is complicated, but once you have understood how data is organized in general, uh, it's simpler than, than, than you can think. I mean, it's just to understand how data is organized. Of course, Apple add, adds new features uh, or, or, or with new version of iOS. So, um, so maybe uh, you, have, uh, uh, you have more um, you have more databases to investigate. That's another key key point. Uh, I strongly suggest you to take a look at the syllabus of our advanced smartphone forensics course, where we have uh, one day and a half in details on iOS from the beginning. So from the basic of iOS to the most detailed information, and we have a full day on third party application analysis. So uh like eight hours like this one hour we had today we have a lot of practice exercises and we have to it is everything just renewed with the latest version of everything so i strongly strongly suggest you to take this course these are the next run by domenica and the hatter in april and may uh the next two months and these are my contacts. If you have any question, I am here. Uh, and thank you very much, of course, too, for taking part at the webcast. We have about five minutes for a question. So I see one question by Al, by one one asker. Yes, is is this uh, is it this data? are encrypted so uh i don't know if you mean in general or everything oh sorry i, I cannot see there are more questions but i cannot see them oops sorry it's my fault okay uh, okay great now i can see them 
Okay, so there is a first question. Will be will slides be downloadable after the presentation? Yes, on the uh, webcast uh, website you can find them uh, quite immediately just after the presentation. We should be able to access the data from these files and is this data encrypted? So in general, uh, encryption depends on of course, there are various layers of encryption on, at the operating system level and also at the hardware level. This is iOS in general. And this is what protects our data. You know, your PIN code protects your data and unless you have a, a cracking feature, one of the cracking feature available, uh, you cannot get uh, access to the, to the data. So I'm dealing with unlocked devices uh, and only if you have access to the phone uh, and this is the first layer once you have overcome the first layer so you know the pin code you can also have additional layer of layers of encryption of course so there are some apps not encrypting the databases so for example whatsapp does not encrypt the database as, as i did show you in the example the SQLite file is not encrypted. We were able to read the messages and see senders and receivers uh, without any kind of encryption. I just opened the SQLite file with the with an SQLite database viewer. Uh, the, say, uh, the same doesn't apply with, for example, with Signal or with uh, um, Tele. Uh, sorry, with Wicker. Uh, these apps store their data. In, a, in an encrypted format, in an encrypted database. The uh, Signal database uh, is encrypted with a key that is stored in the iOS keychain. So if you can get access to the keychain, you can typically decrypt the database. Some other apps like, for example, Wicker, but not only Wicker, they can add additional layers of encryption by additionally protecting the database also with a password so not only with something that is stored in the keychain but also you need a password to decrypt it there is a really recent and interesting paper on digital investigation on weaker encryption uh, that was out just like five days ago so it's really recent i started reading it uh really interesting uh, i strongly suggest you to read so to answer your question, uh, dip, it depends on the app. So there's no fixed rule. Uh, the goal of the poster is, was to show the most interesting path and files. Uh, some of them are encrypted, some of them, most of them are not encrypted. So most apps do not encrypt their data. They rely only on the uh, operating system protection mechanisms. And with that, I think I don't see other questions. So I want to thank you very much for this hour. And uh, if you have any question, uh, feel free to send me an email or to contact me on, uh, on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Uh, and I hope to see you soon uh, virtually and maybe live at some event in the future uh, in, the, in the science world. Uh, take the 4585 course that is really great if you want to learn about smartphone forensics thank you very much and good evening all right thank you so much Mattia for your great presentation which helps bring this content to the SANS community to our audience we greatly appreciate you listening in for a schedule of all SANS excuse me for a schedule of all upcoming and archived SANS webcasts including this one, please visit sans.org forward slash webcasts. Until next time, take care, and we hope to have you back again for the next SANS webcast.